Welcome to Sheena Power Talk Youth Link, where our redeemed, revived, and transformed guests get real and important youth. I'm your host, Sheena Lynn Hansen, and I'm so happy to be serving you on season four, where God is doing an absolutely amazing thing. Today, I am so excited to have in the building with me, Auntie Nadine, the voice you all love so much. God has been so good to me and so good to Power Talk. And let me tell you something, Auntie Nadine Blair, have a word in the house for somebody. There's a Rima in the house for somebody. So go and get your aunties, your uncles, your sisters, and your brothers uptown, downtown. Tell them that Auntie Nadine is going to share some nuggets with us. God bless you and stay tuned. She na power talk. And we arise and take over territory. We are break some curses lyrically. We are shake some kingdom literally. Nah show Satan no sympathy. Young people make we grow spiritually. Stop war with the neighbor physically. Draw for the holy Bible daily. Humble a God feet like baby. Tired for see family in a cemetery. Youths them need guidance mentally. Stop abuse young girls sexually. We need Yeshua in the industry. See it and I try to rally why your destiny. Young girl, keep your identity. Welcome, welcome, woman of God. How are you? I am great. I am happy. And I'm so glad that in the intro you said young people. So that means I'm a young people person. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. You look so beautiful. Thank you. And I love the color. Thank you. And Power Talk need a shoe cam because the shoe is passing. <laughs> now, woman of God, I want you to look into the camera and give us five significant things about yourself. About me? Wow. Five significant, well, significance is tricky, but five things about me. I love people. I love people. I love when rightness is done. I don't like to see wrong things done to people. And so I will, like, in my own way, if I feel like I can be a Mother Teresa and help, I'm going to do that. Um, I love to MC. Um, somebody was asking me if, if I'm not tired to MC. No, not yet, because I believe it's a gift that the Lord gave me. I love oxtail. <clears throat> and one, how much have gone? Four. <laughs> so one more. Oh my. Um, I love radio. I love radio. I love the opportunities it gives me to minister. Mm, I love the part where she says she loves oxtail. Antinadine, <laughs> you love oxtail. Whoa. Antinadine, I do believe that the Bible is the foundation of truth. What is your favorite scripture and what it means to you? Oh, wow. So, um, Philippians 4 mm -hmm. has a beautiful one holy for something. Well, you know, sometimes when I think about Paul, I'm like, if, if, he, this, if he was locked up in prison and decided that he was not going to write anything, and then um, we would have missed out on so many things, including my favorite scriptures, which... Um, with the, the, the verses that say, don't be anxious about anything, pray about everything, tell God what you want, and give him thanks in everything. And if you follow those steps in life, you never lose. Amen. Glory. Mm -hmm. I love that scripture. Yes. Oh, my God. No, I want to ask you, who was Auntie Nadine before salvation, and what did transitioning look like to you? Well, I grew up in a church. Yes. My parents are are pastor. Well, were pastors. They're retired now. Mm -hmm. And then the family was also involved in ministry. My uncle Harold and my uncle Willesley Blair, they would do tent crusades all over the place. So as a little girl, I was always involved in ministry. Mm -hmm. I got saved when I was 10 years old. And before that, I was still in church. I do remember the night I got saved. Everybody should remember the night they get saved. And it was at my Uncle Harold's crusade at Escarpment Road. And I was there. And, you know, you're in church, so you think, okay, you know it. But Jesus came down, you see, and he hold me. And I washed the, 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 the um, stage with my clothes. But when I came out, oh, wow. You know that feeling when you just get saved, everything just pretty, everybody and somehow beautiful and everything. It was a beautiful transition. And the Lord has been with me since. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Now, Auntie Nadine, you're carrying a legacy name. Ooh. Blair. Mm -hmm. What are some of the stereotypes you receive for being a pastor's daughter or a pastor's child? And how do you cope with people's expectation of you. 
Wow, very good questions. Um, I remember when I just started love, I studied media when I was overseas in Tennessee. And when I came back and I got the job, so I was working, I graduated, um, I don't remember the year now, and I went to work for a year in the United States, legally working and everything, so I could have stayed there. But I heard of the opening, came back to Jamaica on the Thursday, did the interview on the Friday, and started working on the Sunday. And two twos, I don't remember how many weeks after, there was an article in the paper how I got the job because, uh, you know, is my uncle owned the station. He doesn't, by the way. He's on the board, but he doesn't own the station. And, you know, it started there and people just, they don't know me, but they were saying things. And um, I learned early years at Love not to take what people say to heart. Um, because people see a, a snippet and they run with the snippet sometimes. But we have to learn in life. Don't take a snippet of somebody's life and mark them like the one that was out. I heard I went viral the other day when I said, you can't read, read. <laughs> and so I saw the comments and I said, well, people weren't in the room. So I've learned that when people aren't in the room with you, in the room of your life to see how you posture and, and see how you flow and how you look at life, don't take it to heart. What we do, which is what I teach when I do conferences, and I think I have it in this book or the other one, that um, what we do is we take from it what is true and we fix it. And if it's not true, then we say, okay, that's out there moving right along. It doesn't belong to me. But if, if they're part of it or all of it is true, fix it and move on. Don't take it to heart. Amen. Took me a while to learn that though. Cause I used to love ball, ball, about what people say and mm. stuff. And it hurts on a deeper level. But you have to learn in life to grow crocodile um, no, what they call it, ducks back. Mm -hmm. So I said ducks back syndrome. So when the tears come, when the words come, they just roll off. Like when on a ducks back, the rain just fall and just so same thing. We have to do that in life. Can't take it to heart. Mm, mm. Very nice, and that's encouraging, guys. Hope you have your notepads and you're taking notes. Now, woman of God, how has your personal challenges and journey been with God over the years? Ooh. You mean like when Jesus did tell me something enough to date the guy <laughs> and then because instead the guy was home uh, in Bible and in, in he was involved in church and everything and I said, No, sir, he's a very nice man, he's involved in church and just so and so can't be God talking to me. And I heard the voice of the Lord say, Go now mm -hmm. and I did not go and I paid the price for that. I went into something, a relationship that was not God ordained. And um, because of that disobedience, thank God, you know the song, because of disobedience, God turned him out of heaven. But because of that disobedience, I missed out on certain things. But I learned of the grace of God. And I learned of the mercy of God. And I take it very seriously to to posture myself before the Lord because I'm not perfect mm -hmm. and nobody else is perfect. I take it seriously. One of the things I should have said when you ask me significant things, I love to worship and I love ushering or, or helping people find their worship space. And so when I get before the Lord and I open my heart and I begin to think about what God has done. And when I, when I do the, the, the worship conferences, I tell people the, the, the scripture that says worship him in spirit and in truth. The, the, the um, message version says your worship must engage your spirit. So you're not just saying um, how great thou art. Um, how great thou art. Oh Lord my God. You're not just say the words because you just sit on there say yeah, oh Lord my God when I, because it's the words no you're engaging your spirit and so for my personal worship I do my best to engage my spirit what am I saying and who am I saying it to when when I'm in my personal space of worship it has to be real when I'm at, when I'm on the stage and and or behind the radio in the studio it has to be real it worship not just words engage my own my, my God, we engage our spirit so our spirit doesn't just stay there, but we engage our spirit, spirit to spirit. Yes. 
deep calls on my deep calls on to his deep and then comes the glory then comes the lifting then comes the changing and it is a process it's a process so my God who taught me then mercy my God who taught me and extended to me grace I honor him I love him and I adore him. I don't always get it right. There are things that we say, things that we do, and things that we think that dishonor God. But when we slip, we can't stay there. Jesus soon come. So we get it right quickly and we keep moving. Amen. Thank you so much, Amen. Amen. God. Amen. You're one of the favorite voices we hear on the Aww. radio. We hear you in worship, perpetual okay. praise, and also you have a talk show for yourself now. Yes. How did you get up to that place? Ah, which one? The talk show or the worship? Oh, okay. <laughs> That's a lot of stories. Okay, so years ago, I was leading worship at my church, Walton Park New Testament Church. And um, I remember the, the deacon or somebody came and kind of pulled my dress, my shirt, and said, time is up for the worship. And I was like, okay, because I believe in obeying rule. So that's why as an MC. When somebody goes over their time, I, I, I don't understand it because to me, you are now walking in dishonor. Talk about that another time. So I, I ended and I went and I sat down and I said, Lord, you weren't finished. And um, he said, you start something with an extended worship. And that's in essence how perpetual praise started. Mm -hmm. I would go around to different churches and have two to three hour worship sessions nonstop. I remember the first one was at Fellowship um, Tabernacle in, um, it, it, well, in Kingston. And for three hours, people were either standing or on their bellies prostrate before the Lord. Amazing indeed. Mm -hmm. That's how I started with perpetual praise with the book. Ava Gay Blair um, is a friend of mine and she had invited me to do her book launch and she was telling me how she started it. She said she just set a date and just worked towards the date. And so in COVID, I set a date and I worked towards the date. And for my birthday in that year, when COVID locked down everything and it, it, it was just like, it can't happen, it happened. Mm -hmm. I did the book and I think I released a song as well um, uh, on that. And the book is about some songs that the Lord downloaded in me. And that's another story by itself. I never knew that I could write songs. Um, I would always get profit sees that you're going to write song and I'm like sure sure but then the Lord started to allow the, his word mm -hmm. that he sent to come alive in me and so it will have stories and about the songs and stories about my life mm, amen. Yeah. was it any at all hard for you to walk in purpose and how would you encourage others to walk in purpose wow wow where oh, you get that question from this? <laughs> um, you see, when you when you are in your purpose, you are you are light. Mm. Light meaning it's not heavy. It's it's easy for you. Mm. Um, somebody is saying that they want to be an MC like me. Um, be your own kind of MC. Mm -hmm. um, when if God, there are times when I'm going to MC or go in the, the studio or go to sing or something and I don't know what I'm going to say and as I do so the Lord downslowed his anointing on me and so it becomes easy so I have to honor the, the gift and walk in humility honor the God who gave me the gift because so he gave me so he can't pull it back although the gifts are, with, are without repentance but the anointing you know you can't just say you you are take too much you taking this to yourself no 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 I'm gonna take this away so woe be unto us if God takes it away like Saul and we don't even know that he has taken away that anointing that that thing from us and we're walking in disobedience so um how is it how do just just stay stay humble before the lord ask god what it is that he has for you to do and you will know because it will be easy you will be led to it your passion will pull you towards your call and when you are walking in that call it will be easy 
and it will be easy because God makes it easy for you. If you're walking into something and it's, it's rough and, you know, see, saw, madari, da, uh-uh, that might not be it. Or maybe you're not doing it the way God wants you to do it. So find your, your space. What is pulling at your heart? What do you not like to see and you think you can fix it? When you found that, you found your purpose. Mm, glory mm. to God. Mm. I hope you guys are taking notes. No one of God, you're one of the most sought after MC because you're extremely good. You're very That's impressive. Good. What drives your passion? Um, I love people. Mm -hmm. I really do. Yes. I love the Lord and I want people to get their breakthrough. I honor the position and I am still called no because persons call me. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm still called no because people call me. That makes mm -hmm. it so simple. But um, I am humbled because people still call me and they see value still. I, I recently did a, a show and it was um, in Halfway Tree Square and, and I, 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 somebody came to me before and they were like, I just tied a concert and I want to see God move and so and so. And I was listening and I said, when he finished, I said, that's my heart too, because I see MC, I have to know my place. I am not the artist. So if I am going to sing in between, it must be something that Everybody can see, say, is God moving this? It's not just about sweating and jumping up and down, but it's a God move. And so how do I, how do, I do it? I, I let God do it. Yes. It's hard sometimes, you know, because as I said before, sometimes I go on the stage, I don't know what I'm going to say. I'm nervous, but then I go on and the Lord fills the mouth mm. with the right words and the right moment. And I try to stay in tune and say, God, what do you want to say to these people here? You know, and, and stay prayed up, folks. Don't take it easy. Mm. Don't, take it, don't take it lightly. Talking about prayed up, mm -hmm. many persons in this season, they have locked in prayer, like the, the worship life gone down, mm -hmm. can't read the word, can't pray like they used to. How would you encourage them? Do it. Mm. Because you know the power of your prayer. Mm -hmm. You know the power of your private praise. You know it. So if you don't feel it, Go with what you know and not what you f are feeling in the moment. Years ago, everybody know, you know TBN. Yes. And TBN, the, the owner, the previous owner, they passed away, the husband and wife. I don't remember the wife's name. And she used to wear the big wig. Mm -hmm. And um, she, one day she was, she was doing a feature and she was, she had the walking in the meadow and she had her Bible and she said she can't hear God and she can't feel God. And I was looking at this thing and I'm like, they hold you every day, you're up on the TV and I tell people about God and how God moves and you're giving testimony of how God did this and that. And you are here saying you are for weeks, you're, you're not feeling God. And I thought to myself, it can happen to anybody. We should never ever look at everybody and say they are Moses because even Moses had his doubts. Everybody has a moment, a time when you just don't feel like it, whether it is the people around you get trouble <laughs> or the problems that you're facing, but you have to go with what you know and not what you are not feeling. And she said what she knew in the moment was to read the word. And she took up her Bible and she read our Bible and she read our Bible and she walk and she not feel nothing and she pray. And that's what I tell people. All right, don't look at it as prayer. Just say, God, I don't feel you, you know. I don't feel you and I feel very sad right now. I, in fact, I'm very upset. I don't like, talk to God. Talk to, just talk to him and tell him how you feel. I don't feel like praying, but yeah, your Bible tell me that you're great and you're good and so forth. So I'm trusting that. And remind him, of, forget not his benefits. Yes. That little line there, forget not. God love when we big him up, you know. So you just start and you say, God, I remember me to feel you, but remember you take the, the Hebrew boys and you had them in the fiery furnace. And I want to be strong like that, but I don't feel strong like that because around them, 
everybody was bowing and everybody is doing this and that and everybody are go bar and everybody are sex off and everybody are do this but Rokusha and everybody is doing this and that around them but what are you doing you have to go with what you know tell God talk to him God I don't like this I, I just I can't bother me they even feel for pray to you but me just I tell you me, me, talk to him and he will listen he will come running after you he will come chasing after you he will bring what you need to you right there in your lap amen mm -hmm. amen that was so powerful Paul. again if you're listening right now please share in the comment section how are you feeling so far now woman of god were you always this bold no <laughs> <laughs> um well maybe i was um i because i grew up in church right mm -hmm. and my church we we have um we have what we call back then we used to have um oh, mondays was family training hour and Fridays was youth fellowship so uh, my growing up years was very um a good training ground was a very good training ground so family training oh I'd go up there I was president for the drama groups I'd go up there and I was always in the public eye I, I got saved at the age of 10 and I started singing in a singing group at the age of 10 and we'd go around we did a tour in the US right in those young age 14 15 there a tour in the US and so forth so I was open to being in the public's eye a lot at a young age i was also singing at um the general the international general assembly of our church which is if you can imagine if you ever see them big arena with whole heap of people and when you look one whole heap of people have done that and um and so it kind of opened open the door for me to not be afraid in that way but i want to tell you that even the best of us and the biggest of us, I'm, and when I say us, me mean bigger than me, girl, you know, there are levels. <laughs> but I remember Faye Ellington saying she does get nervous as well. You'll hear different persons, um, Kirk Franklin and TD, all of them. All of us have our, you have it too, I'm sure, have our moments when I don't know how I go do this. But then we know our God. Mm -hmm. And the and we know that what we've been trained to do. Mm -hmm. So don't put away the training. Whether God is gonna train you or, or download the gifting through the Holy Spirit, or you go to school or both and get your training. Apostle Joshua Selman is somebody I listen to a lot. And he talks about that too. It happens. Me dear, just do your thing. And when when the time comes, Jesus will tell you what he say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. Have you ever felt like giving up? How do I answer that? Yes and no. I've felt, I've questioned. I've questioned, um, but I've not let that settle because of my background. Um, I have felt like going away and just going somewhere where nobody knows me, not giving up on God but just just having a moment of just 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 being away i have felt that i've i've people have hurt me um people have let me down um i've i've gone through so many things where persons misunderstand me and instead of trying to understand me they they judge me and just put me sentence me and put me away and then I have to love them through it because I love people and I love the Lord. I remember in many times um, where I'm in a group at work and I'm in a in a setting where I'll go home and I'll, I'll curl up myself in the bed and I'll start from the front office and pray for everybody in the office because I felt alone. I felt like everybody, and now it's not just feel, it was happening. Um, everybody was just had their thing to say about Nadine and blah, blah, blah. And it, it's a lonely place and a hurtful place because I love people. And um, I, so I learned to pray for those who have ought against me. Mm -hmm. And, um, but yeah, there are times when I feel like I just, I just go in our mountain mm -hmm. and just, um, mm -hmm. but not to give up on God. I love that 
never thought about giving up. Yeah, that. yeah. And that is and that is about like how you grow as well as. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Daddy and Mommy, for mm -hmm. for training me. Wow, yeah, nice. yes. No one I got. You were just talking about a little situation. How do you handle naysayers, persecutors, mouth murderers? Me pray them, pray for them. Whoa. Pray for them. Like I told you, just the other day, there was a, a thing where um, I, I was at my church and I was leading worship. I was in a comfortable space because I'm in my church, my home church, mm -hmm. and I'm leading worship. And I paused and I said, so they can't read, read. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they took that clip and they posted it. And so, so persons didn't get to see the full picture. And so comments were coming in and people were like, I would never want to be in a worship session like that. I don't want nobody shouting at me and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And I said, I said, oh dear, mm -hmm. they don't know the full story. Mm -hmm. And you, I just pray. You just I pray just pray for them. them. I move on. Mm -hmm. Now, woman of God, before we take a break, I want to know three of your own mothers, somebody who admired the faith. <sighs> Apostle Joshua Selman. Mm, nice. My father and my mother, that's one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes, together. I put them together as one. Mm -hmm. And uh, ah, I guess, uh, oh boy, um, I think I'll leave it as that. Apostle, my dad, and my mom, and I'll tell you why. No, I'm gonna God, you have won many awards and you have gained notoriety for all that you do and all that you are. How does that make you feel? It made me feel good. Nice. It made me feel good. I feel good, but the best award is when you please God. Mm. Yeah, it, it feels good to be honored. I love honoring people. Wow. So when I do my show, I, I do my show and I give persons something. Um, whenever I, there's a thing that I do each year, I call it a night of worship, night of honor. And I honor, I love that. I love bigging up people. My, my organization is allowed to shine ministry. Christ through us to others for others to shine. I love it. Mm. Love bigging up people. I love how you speak about honor. What does honor mean to you? Lord, man. I, I love to say this. Honor God by honoring people. Mm -hmm. Spouses, honor God by honoring your spouse. Mm -hmm. What does honor mean? I honor you, Sheena. Mm -hmm. I know, I've heard your story and I want you to shine. I want people, the camera, the lady with the camera sitting in her head, I want you to shine. I want to put others before me. I want to think of others higher than myself. Don't think of yourself more highly than you ought. You know that scripture? Mm -hmm. I, that's what honor means to me. Mm -hmm. I respect titles. So if you studied and you became a pastor and you're now reverend, all if you're my friend, reverend so and so, mm -hmm. bishop, so I honor you. That's mm -hmm. what honor means to me. No, that is so awesome. I love that about you, woman of God, and your humility. But talking about humility, you walk with a level of poise, self assurance, security that is admired by many people. Now, in this generation, we have an identity crisis. How do you encourage us as youths to just be firm and confident? First of all, you are not alone. Mm -hmm. You are not alone, meaning you're not the only person who is going through the troubles that you are facing. Mm -hmm. There are other people that are facing it too. Mm -hmm. And you're not alone because Jesus is with you. Mm -hmm. Kirk Franklin wrote songs to encourage us right. through, through some pain and challenges that he went through. Kirk Franklin was telling us to smile again and he was having trouble with his son. Mm -hmm. Kirk Franklin was telling us that, that there's a blessing in the storm and he was having trouble at his home. Mm -hmm. That's one example. T.D. Jakes was going through his wife is his daughter, pardon, being pregnant and he's a big minister all over the place but he was there preaching through. You are not the only person going through challenges. I, I can tell you, we may have to go break, but I can tell you as a child, I went through something where I was almost raped. I was almost molested. And I had to make a decision growing up that, okay, something is wrong here because a seed was planted. And, and, and that seed said, you're not good enough. And I sat down looking through the window as a little girl saying, why didn't he come to me? He came to me and I wasn't good enough. So he left me. That's what I was saying as a little girl. 
And, and that stuck with me for years, <clears throat> me believing I'm not good enough. And somebody watching is saying that same thing, you're not good enough. The devil is a liar. You are good enough. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. And it's right here. We are going to take a commercial break. Devil must know we no worry. We are worry a glory carrier. We break down every barrier. Spear the goat and any blood can carry a holy ghost. One can tan tan carry a. Stay up in the chopper and them dalia. Stay in a school Chantal Bree and Talia. Load the road Sean David and Maria. Serve the Lord that will make life merrier. Whenever you watch a video, please add a like. When you add a like, you tell YouTube that this is a very good program, and YouTube will in return start recommending the program to other persons that use YouTube and that will be good for the channel. So whenever you watch, please add a like. I've noticed that I have a lot of viewers, 200,000, 100,000, 50,000, 70,000, but the likes are not matching up. So what I'd like you to do, please add a like whenever you watch a show. And also leave a comment. Let me know what could improve. Let me know what you'd want to see, who you'd want to see or share your little the story in the comment section not only that please share with somebody please help me to get power talk out there what i desire is for the right person to see the program i don't have the sponsors i'm doing this by myself with the help of god of course and i just want the right persons to see the program and just come in partner with me so please share it with somebody please leave a comment please like and i thank you guys she na power talk Hey Power Gang, remember to get your book on Amazon today, today, today. No other day but today you can get it in Kindle form and you can get it in paperback form. And if you are in Jamaica and you want a copy of this amazing book, The Crown and the Cross, listen to me. Call me at 1-876-429-6004. Listen Power Gang, you must have one of these books. Come on now, Crown and the Cross. Welcome back, welcome back to Sheena Power Talk. Here with me is Auntie Nadine Blair, and let me tell you, this has been so amazing so far. I hope you're staying gone for all of your aunties and your uncles, you know, because this is amazing. Now, woman of God, we were talking about, you know, the identity crisis that the youths are facing in this time and how they can be more confident. Yeah. You know, um, I love young people, yeah. and every chance I get to speak with young people, I, I rush for it. I did a youth tour um, one year, I think it was was even was it during covid and i just called a couple schools and i alone just went i brought a friend here um a few of them and i just went and spoke one-on-one -on -one with a few classes of young people um you mean a lot to me because i I want you to understand the value that is in you. In my book, there's a chapter called You Were Made For This, and that was the name of the tour. And I remember when I felt God speaking, you're going to ask me about uh, an encounter. And, and one of the things I, I said, God, I know you want me to do this. Um, what do you want me to say? And I sat at the, the computer and I started, I said, I just heard you were made for this. And I'm going to read it, just a little part that says you were made with faith enough. Don't you ever believe that you don't have it. The word of God says his divine power has given us everything we need for life, for love, for godliness. So whatever you need for what you are facing now, it is in you. So you were made with faith enough to move a mountain. Small as a seed, you can overcome any problem. You are made with a sound deep inside. Did you know that Jesus hears every single cry you make today or did last week? He already has the answers to next year's questions you will seek. And the last line, the last verse says, center your thoughts, will your emotion. Let Christ steer your ship in this raging ocean. You are stronger than you know. Young people, listen. You are stronger than you know. You are wiser than you show. Smarter than you think. You were made for this. Amen. Mm. Glory to God. And as you read a little snippet of your book, 
let's talk book. Yes. You wrote their book, Sing Your Song. Sing Your Song. Congratulations. Thank Annie. you. What inspired that move? Um, oh, it's in the book. <laughs> it's in the book. A friend of mine from England mm -hmm. had come down. And I, I, I do struggle still with, um, you know, believing in me I'll, I'll believe for you i'll push you i'll push you i'll push you but to, for me to do something it took me a long time my dear so he came and he was speaking with um gospel artists i do a thing where i meet with gospel artists i love pouring out pouring in pouring through to gospel artists and ministering to them and so he was speaking we were finished with the session and I was walking around and he was talking with a group of persons and I was passing him and I heard him say sing your song and the Holy Spirit does poof and said that is what you need to write about I was like okay mm -hmm. and I said sing your song and I look you look at the different things mm -hmm. what that could mean mm -hmm. if you have sewing in you sing your song go sew if you have writing in you sing your song go write mm -hmm. sing your song is not limited to songs but it is what is it that you can do that God has put in you do it don't let covid stop you don't let your mind stop you don't let your friends stop you you know that god has put it in you i talked earlier about passion write your book and sing a song take your program by your light by your camera by your stand by your sofa chair by your this and put it together and sing your song Mm. And chapter three says, "Sing your song, even when life gets bitter." There you go. Tell us a little bit about that. Oh God, life can get bitter. Mm -hmm. Life can get hard. Um, you know, I'm, the story about Hannah and Penina. Hannah did I get enough? You know the story, right? Well, let me tell you for those who don't know, Penina was having all the babies, and Hannah wasn't. And Penina was like, na 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 na, me can have baby. And Hannah is like, leave me alone. And back then, if you didn't have a child, and if you didn't have a boy child, you're not saying anything. And so in that culture, she may have been frowned on, but she knew her God and she went into prayer and she prayed and she prayed and she prayed and she stayed and she prayed and she prayed and God blessed her with a child. Mm. You know, so you may have your bitter moments and you may feel bitter inside and rightly so. Sometimes you have a right to be bitter, meaning what they are upset with or whatever is happening is wrong but don't take it to, to the group let me tell you something a friend of mine you know told me that he and, he and his friend were had a disagreement and whatever happened and the friend died and so the other person you now he and I are talking and he was like boy you know me and him did have a disagreement I will never get to talk about it we never get to clear the ear and the man dead but it's a good thing that this guy who was left, he was here now, he knows God and understand the things of God. So he can, de he dealt with it the right way. Some people can't. Mm -hmm. So you, so what, whoever you have up in your heart, life is too short. Mm -hmm. Th them treat you bad, life is too short. Not everybody you're going to go hug up again after they have done you something. Sometimes you have to make a decision and sever and cut it off and you know or change how you used to talk to them maybe you don't tell them everything about your life but maybe you just say hi how are you doing god bless you and you move on but do not hold up anybody in your heart jesus is coming soon and we can go at any time mm -hmm. no woman has like even just a presentation of the book is amazing. Thank Very you. beautiful. Thank you. I love it. What inspired this though? You just chose the picture. Yeah. Um, you know, I took three, I think I had three covers mm -hmm. and it was my mom because the other one that I had on a different wig and my, I was like, oh, I look fabulous, mom. And she's like, no, this look more like you. Mm -hmm. I come on, Anna, my mother, mm -hmm. I chose that one and she mm -hmm. says, this one is it. And I, that, that picture spoke to me mm -hmm. um, when we went to do the photo shoot and we were like looking at it, I was like, wow, it just said, this is it. Mm -hmm. And so we chose that. Mm -hmm. And um, Tony K. Brumfield, a very good artwork, and she did the artwork and put it together. And 
Yeah. And yeah. another friend of mine, Marsha A. Malcolm, she's an author, Jamaican author who lives in Westmoreland. Mm -hmm. She helped me to go through the whole thing. I did the writing and the putting the things together. I taught myself how to do this. Well, no, like through Marsha, mm -hmm. she would tell me what to do. And then I did all of the things. And then I got some help from um, someone who did the what do you call what's the word? I don't remember the word, but we do the other part. And then Marsha told me how to upload it and wraps me have a book. Mm -hmm. And if this book can speak to different, different areas oh, yeah. of her life. Yes, and different age groups. Mm. Yeah, um, Joan Wright Good is a friend of mine and she also has been helping me. She was like, who, who is this book for? I said, for anybody. I, I, my heart is with the young people and young adults, but it's for anyone. And I've gotten some really good comments from it. It's available on Amazon mm -hmm. right now. It's not available in Jamaica, but you can order it. Me dear, the world shrink. You can order from Amazon and then ship it to you. Mm -hmm. um, so you can get the Kindle version if you like Kindle. I love Kindle. Mm -hmm. And um, you can also order the book itself. Nice, nice. So guys, please ensure to go over to Amazon and order the book. I'm going to put all the links um, in the description below. But make sure, I want you to say 100 person, 100,000 to get that book, please. <laughs> no, my God, I am so happy for you and this book. Congratulations. But is there any more books in the bank? You know that at the back of the book, mm -hmm. the last, last chapter, there is Brata. I call it Brata, Ooh. which is the beginning of the next book, which mm -hmm. I started writing before. Before I wrote this book, mm. only just bag me up and tell me go finish the book. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will. I will. By the grace of God, I will. Any events that we can look forward to. Oh Lord, there's so many things, so many things coming up. Um, okay. I don't know when this will air, and so I don't like to date um, myself. But every year, March four mm -hmm. is Perpetual Praise anniversary. So whenever this airs. Every it's year, March year <laughs> you can um, you can um, watch it and look out for for it. There is a song that is in my spirit. Pour it out. The Lord gave me that song for our twentieth anniversary, and there's a line in it that says, um, "Won't let the whispers of the enemy be louder than God's word in mm. you." That was the first line that came to me i don't remember what i was doing and i just heard don't let sometimes we allow the whispers of the enemy and somebody said what about the shouts i said whether well, it's whisper or shout <laughs> whatever it is don't let the enemy what the enemy is saying to you sink and 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 take hammock and ice cream and sit on and rock a bye baby in your heart keep that away with the word of the lord and stand on the word of God and believe. Mm. Amen. So we have so much to look forward what to. What things? Amen. No, my no, God, let's talk a singleness. What <sighs> does purity mean to you? Do not go there. Mm -hmm. That's what it means. Mm -hmm. um, and purity, purity also is purity of heart. Yes. Back in the day, I used to do um, singles conferences. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I, I remember when I started it, it wasn't so much that I wanted to start it, but some people said I should. And I, I remember one day <clears throat> we had some guests. Our conferences were called Singles Out for God's Purpose. And then we had different themes. And one year we had this young man who was a virgin and he was there talking with a committee and it was his turn to talk and you could hear a pin drop mm -hmm. when he was talking about how he's he has kept himself and he's proud of it and yeah. you know and so and so and this and that and me sit down and me I said to myself but me never keep myself and yes I have fallen but I got up like you know that commercial mm -hmm. I've fallen but I can't get up well I thought I fell, but I got to do mm -hmm. and um, I remember when he was finished talking a lady came to me and she said Auntie Nadine why you never say something for for the people who have fallen mm -hmm. and feel worthless you know and so when I said yes that's true because he was and he had a right to talk about his experience. That was his experience. And and I wish I had waited, you know, and people, people who are watching, you probably saying, I wish I never, but if you did, 
then there comes the blood of Jesus. And so staying pure means staying away from the things that hurts God's heart, staying away from the things that are against his word, staying away from the things that will cause the Holy Spirit to exit, staying away from the things that the enemy will draw you. Don't let the whispers of the enemy be louder than God's word in you. You can stay poor and pure, and if you fall, hurry up and get up. God is reading your heart. He knows your heart, and if your if the winning thing is love God more than anything. If you have a friend, if you have a guy or a, or a girl, right, and a your wife or your husband, you want to please them, right? You want to do everything. If them love to cook, love the rice cook a certain way. You go make sure you cook the rice a certain way and the chicken a certain way and this and that a certain way. And you, you them love when you dress up, you do and you fix up everything. You do that in the natural. If the Lord God of heaven says, hold off on the six. It lasts for three seconds. <laughs> three, you understand? You understand what I mean? And then after that, you feel like, don't waste it. Don't waste that time. That is for a certain time in your life. Put it down, put it over there. So I'm always say you're not going dead. But if you fall, get right back up and keep on moving in God. Don't take him for joke and say, oh, you know, he will forgive me. No, he knows your heart. He knows if you're playing. So be serious about loving God. And when you love God, you will do what pleases him. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. See, I've shared a little bit about the challenges now. What does being single as a Christian woman or the journey, <sighs> what does that look like for you? And what are some of your support systems? I am single. <laughs> <laughs> And I'd love to get married, but if I don't, me not go dead. Mm. So one of the things now that um, I do and, and what I used to teach when I used to have singles conferences, and I'm looking at doing some more singles yes, conferences. Yes, please. Yeah. I used to do it, and then people say, you're, you're going to be single because you, you, you're you doing singles conference. And I say, what? <laughs> but... Um, will you ask me again? Wait, me what, what does life look to you? What, look yeah, like you, I think, you know, there was an article that was done about me in the paper. I don't remember which paper it was. And it said single and happy. And then I think it was TVJ or CBM. Somebody called me to do an interview because of that article. How can you be single and happy? My darlings, if I am going to be single and unhappy, then life would not be a jolly good life now, would it? Mm. I would be sour and I would walk around the place with my head held down. I choose not to do that, but to rather enjoy every moment of my life. And so whatever I am in, the, the word my mom would say is bloom where you're planted. And so if you're planted in the life of singlehood, by all means, enjoy your life. Mm. In a matter of sense, people of Jesus, that we go sour up with self because we don't have a man. There are times, recently I did a show and my feet hurt so much. I said, I wish I had a honey. I wish I had a him to just go home and him just say, honey, come. Let me rub your feet for you. Me don't have no him, so me just cock up to some pillow and cock up my foot so up on the bed. And, and I went to sleep. I'm not going to die over it. I will pause for a moment and I'll say, to the really nice, you know, to go out. And I pause because I'm human. When me done pause and me think, mm -hmm. I ain't staying there. And I encourage you singles, do not be human. Why is it be human? You, you're going to feel for somebody. Yeah. You're going to want to have somebody hug up to you mm -hmm. and to take you out and to kiss you and all of this. But if you sit there in that moment, if you sit there and start think and dream and a play all that song, and a lover, I wanna love. Nee -nee. 
don't encourage it. You've got to be strong, people. Because what's going to happen? You're going to fall. And when you fall, no. So as a single woman, get support systems. What do I do? Me dear, me too. I'm so busy. How long it took for me to confirm this interview? Oh, well. Thank you. <laughs> so I just stay busy. Mm -hmm. I'm busy at work. I'm busy with ministry. I'm busy at home. My dad is not well now. And so I, I love to go in when I get up in the morning and I go. We have nurses round the clock and I go and I talk to him and I whisper in his ears and I tell him how much he's been a good father and blah 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 ain't nobody got time but when those thoughts come because I am human and I wish I had somebody to hug me I appreciate the moment I appreciate the feeling but I do not sit and live in it yes you have to have people Girl, I wish I had a guy to go out with right now. Girl, I'm struggling. Well, we'll go play basketball, buy ice cream, walk up and down, pray, whatever. And I'm not going to be all holy and everything. Prayer works, but you're human. So find a good support system. Find what works for you. And you can do this. Pray. Amen. So Auntie Nadine is saying singleness is also an awesome place. It's an awesome place and a place for you to grow because it don't make any sense. Now you go patch up. You see, you're, you're not complete. You're not fulfilled. And then you go with your unfulfilled, incomplete mm -hmm. self and catch on to a man who is not complete or not fulfilled. And the two of them sooner you can not go complete mm -hmm. and you're not going to be fulfilled if in yourself as a man standing alone as a woman standing alone you're not complete and fulfilled go study go find book read go develop yourself my auntie would have said develop it up whatever it is learn how to cook and um, do, do something develop you and make yourself better when one complete person stands before a complete nether person, oh, wow. man and woman, uncle, right? Then there, my darlings, is a beautiful thing. If you have things in your past that you have to deal with, because people go into marriage and say, the man is going to help me or the woman is going to help me with the baggage. No, find one counselor, find somebody who is trained to hear what you're not saying and get the counseling, get the prayer, get it out so you know, go into the marriage with baggage. Yes. And that is why some marriages don't work because people go in there thinking that the spouse is going to make them better only God can make you better mm -hmm. and sometimes there are things you have to do along with prayer to make you better mm, thank you so You're much welcome. Oh <laughs> now what are some of the things that you are you are able to do single that you couldn't do when you were married get up and go to Paris <laughs> child I remember that day I was like I just got up one day and I said I was talking with my friend she used to live in Paris at the time and she, she was there and and I said I just got up one day and I just said I'm going to Paris and I just get up and I go to Paris I call my friend and I said I want to go to Paris she said when and I told her the date she said guess what around that date I'm going to Switzerland why you don't come with us so we just pack up and can you imagine oh, honey <laughs> Some friends going to Switzerland and I want to go to Paris. I can't go. <laughs> and then he's like, no, you know, because I think that you should stay and this and the children at the eh, eh, enjoy your singleness. Enjoy it, honey. Do the things. And people are people are single looking at marriage as their answer. And there are some people in some marriages, not all, who are looking at single people and saying they wish them did single. You try to find happiness where you are. Bloom where you are planted. Wherever you are, shine your light where you're there. Enjoy your singleness. Oh my god, I can't really we're coming to an end with You I'm don't know <laughs> that. <laughs> I was asking, what are some of the things that you discovered about yourself in your singleness? Um, At least two. Two things. You know, no, I mean, just told me just live. Mm. I can do all things through Christ. Mm. I can survive. I, I really, I went through the times when me, me, it, me, it, me in the bed and all I love song them, all I sad love song them, I play, I mean, I ball, I ball myself to sleep. And after a while, I just said, this now work. So I pour myself into pouring into people. Mm -hmm. 
and I enjoy that. Mm. I enjoy that. So, um, but that don't mean say me don't want to, you know, because oh, if, see, so if you're watching, yes, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that woman. I got a piece of encouraged today because you know I'm coming from a certain lifestyle. Yeah. Coming to the church and they're saying you know change. You have to marry first. At one time I was like in a rush, like God with a husband, you know, mm -hmm. just to please people to say, see I'm changed because you know I have a husband. Mm -hmm. But now I'm getting more comfortable with just being where you are, as I develop say. who you are, mm -hmm. she know. Mm -hmm. You are so powerful. I heard your testimony and I said, you have to be on my show. And she called me before me called her. But you're so powerful and you're reaching people I cannot reach. You hear what I say? You're reaching people T.D. Jakes cannot reach. You are reaching people Apostle Joshua Selman cannot reach. There is a place for you. And if God so wills it, there is a person for you in the right time, in the right season. So until then, your heart must go on singing. Yes. Until then, with joy, carry on mm -hmm. and do the things. I admire the fact that coming here, me, I said, Tan, do though. She said, she buy her lights and she buy her this, she buy the camera, she buy the this and she put on and look at you. May God bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you peace. Hey, amen. Peace. Yes, Lord. Peace. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for making a difference. Amen. Thank you for not sitting down and saying, this was my life and your park and said, me no good. You are good. Yes, you are great. Because you serve a good and a great God. Yes, Thank you so much, Mona God. I appreciate it. Now we're closer to the end. I know that you're enjoying this. I feel the Holy Spirit. It's just, this woman walked with the wealth of your night, and it's even just the little things that she say. God is so amazing. Woman God, I always ask closer to the end for persons to share excerpt from the last sermon they preached. Oh. Or maybe something that God puts on your heart. Look in the camera, minister to the people. Wow. Recently, I shared at a, an event, and I was saying that the children of Israel, when they were walking through the Red Sea, it was night, midnight. The waters parted, and the, it's whatever was in the water, shark, whatever, they could not pass the boundary mm. that was there because God had set it you over there so and they were walking in the night on a surface that God made hard enough for them to walk on some of you are walking in your midnight season and there are things there are temptations there are attacks that would want to command us but the God of the universe has made a way where there seemed to be no way in that midnight season that you're going through there are things that will try to come at you but it cannot touch you because God has made a way there are things the sharks of, of words that are against you people who are against you but it can't come past the watermark man and there uh, there he has made a way a, a flat footed road where there should be sinking sand he made a way now the enemy at daybreak when things start to look light decided that they go go and at daybreak when things were just changing don't give up in your midnight season mm. some of you are about to give up and you don't know that your enemy is going to be drowned at daybreak at daybreak when the things start to break at daybreak when that the enemy my god he loses right there walk on walk on in the name of Jesus, walk on. Do not give up. You are right at the edge of your miracle. Do not give up. There is hope beyond hope. Do not give up. The enemy will drown right there at daybreak. Walk through your midnight. You can do this because God 
God, the Adonai, the El Shaddai is still on the throne. God who sits high and looks low is still in control. God, Jehovah God, my God Almighty. Can you imagine the tree? Listen, what much time I have? The tree Hebrew boys, they knew their God for themselves and they decided. You know, I'm sorry, King. We tr you know, you are King, and we, we we honor you. We honor your position, but we have decided. If He chooses to rescue us, we now bow. And if He chooses not to rescue us, we now bow. Don't bow. You got this. God bless you. With that being said, we're going to take a break, and Auntie Nadine is going to pray for us <laughs> when we come back. She na power talk. Hey Power Gang, remember to get your book on Amazon today, today, today. No other day but today. You can get it in Kindle form and you can get it in paperback form. And if you are in Jamaica and you want a copy of this amazing book, The Crown and the Cross, listen to me. Call me at 1-876-429-6004. Listen Power Gang, you must have one of these books. Come on now, Crown and the Cross. Welcome back, welcome back to Sheena Power Talk. Please get your hearts in the right posture as Auntie Nadine is going to pray for us. Go ahead, thank you, God. At the mention of your name, every chain will break, everything must change. Jesus. Just a whisper of your name. Silence, wind, and rain at the mention of your name. Father, I whisper your name, Jehovah God. I whisper your name, Lord Jesus Christ. I whisper the name, Holy Spirit. I thank you for the opportunity to share and to be a blessing to somebody. I pray in the name of Jesus that something that was said will reach the heart of someone whenever they watch it, whether they're watching when it broadcasts or they're watching later down years from now. I just want you to be glorified, Lord Jesus. I pray for Sheena and her team and for the show, God, I pray that it will go just surprise her, God. The many doors that will open, that the interests that will open for her, that her show will go. Yes, it's on the internet and it goes across the countries of the world. But not just so much for Sheena to go to the world, but for your name and for your testimony. The testimonies, oh God, of the many people that she has interviewed, oh God, and will interview, will go to the nations of the world. In the name of Jesus, uh, that her very heart's desire, Lord God, you will meet in the right time and the right place. In the name of Jesus, that confusion is not her portion, that, oh God, you are guiding her steps and her decisions that she's remaining still in your heart and she knows her God for herself and God you will show up at the right time and the right place in the name of Jesus that that person who is watching right now and in a bit of confusion you will know that fear is not of God and when fear comes fear brings all kind of cumbolo with them but if you tell the devil to move and you speak to the spirit of fear you have it in you in the name of of Jesus to speak to the spirit of fear then God will show up with power then God will show up with love and then God will show up giving you a sound mind in the midst of your situation you have all that you need to fight this mountain who are you great mountain when we have a great God who created the mountain so father God be glorified be magnified be lifted high we shall Shine you forth. Uh, we say, Arise, God, and let the enemies of God be scattered. May our lives be such that we are not enemies of God, but that we will walk in the will and the way of God. Arise, Almighty God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Arise, O God, and take your place in this program, in this nation, whatever nation is watching it, in this world. Be thou. 
thou glorified. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Somebody just say, I love you, God. I love you, Jesus. I love, tell him about him benefits. I love how you beat me up this morning. I love how you provide for me, God. I love how God, sometimes when his shoes are born, Lord God, you can't fix his foot. Lord God, sometimes when I have a headache, sometimes when I have, just tell him about his benefits. Tell him, oh God, God, you provided food for me this morning. Thank you, Father, for providing food this evening. Thank you, God, for making the way clear when I was confused. Thank you for your many benefits. Many are the blessings that you give unto me. Blessings overflowing like a mighty sea. When I feel like I'm useless, you make me feel useful and you use me for the praise and the glory of your name. We thank you for the many benefits, Lord. We give you glory. Mm. We give you glory. You are great. You do miracles so great. Thank you, Jesus. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. Hallelujah. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. And if Amen. Amen. And if you're under the sound of our voice and you know that the Lord is knocking at the door of your heart, mm -hmm. please say yes today. Please get saved today. Mm -hmm. Go to a Bible-believing church and choose Jesus. And Nadine did it. I did it. You can do it. God bless you guys. And guess what? Auntie Nadine is going to share her social media platforms with you. So you'll be able to find her and then we'll come back to where you get the book. You can go on YouTube, Nadine Blair, N-A-D-I-N-E-B-L-A-I-R. On Instagram, it's Nadine Blair J-A. And on Facebook, it's Nadine Blair fan page, although I'm going to change it. That was back in the day when everybody used to say fan page. <laughs> Nadine Blair, and you'll find it. Yes. Thank you. Thank Twitter you. as well. Thank or you. X. <laughs> Please remind them how they can get this book. Yes, you can jump onto Amazon.com. Anywhere in the world you are, you can order the book. It will be mailed to you, top quality. Amazon does a great job printing the books. Yep. Um, very good quality. And um, I want to also thank Iosef who printed it for me when I just did the book. They're here in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And you can also get the Kindle version if you like the digital version. You can get that as well. And all antinatives social media platform and even the book will be on screen so guess what support auntie nadine thank you please buy a book and tell us how it impacted you yes auntie and nadine. listen to me on love 10 a.m to 1 p.m yes, tell us about that, monday to friday for now i don't know when i'll leave mm -hmm. down that but 10 a.m to 1 p.m monday to friday on love 101 what about the show oh my show my show is on you can get it on the playlist on youtube mm -hmm. season one is there and we're working Working now to do season two. Um, season one was just uh, uh, Jesus, such a blessing. And one of the things that I said was, if I don't start, I won't start. So I'm going to start. It's yes. going to be on a shirt coming to a store near you. Yes. But um, I, that's how I started my talk show, the Nadine Blair Show. So you can just jump onto my YouTube channel. It's also on CGTV, PBCJ, and on Love TV. Mm. Mm, amazing so ensure to go and watch that and subscribe to auntie nadine can you know anything mm -hmm. auntie nadine do 
Well done. Thank you. Maddie, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I love you. Hello. God bless you. Thank you. Oh, again, it has been beautiful and it's a wrap. God bless you. She na power talk. Hey, Power Gang, remember to get your book on Amazon today, today, today. No other day but today. You can get it in Kindle form and you can get it in paperback form. And if you are in Jamaica and you want a copy of this amazing book, The Crown and the Cross, listen to me. Call me at 1 876 429 6004. Listen, Power Gang, you must have one of these books. Come on now. Crown and the Cross. Hey beauties and cuties, thank you so much for being a part of Sheena Power Talk in Youth Link. I trust that your soul is edified, Satan is terrified, and God is glorified. If you want to be a part of this amazing move, this divine move, you can always call me or contact me on any social media handles. Don't keep that story to yourself. Let it out. Let yourself be free and free somebody else. Share your story today on Sheena Power Gang. Listen to me, Power Team. Power gang, we are cause an eruption in the earth. We are called for revival, and God has set the nigga and broke out in our life. In Jesus' name, let it be well. God bless you. And please remember if you do want to sow, if you do want to help this ministry monetary, you can always contact me. You can always get me through Cash App or other different means like Western Union, MoneyGram, anything and any way you want to sow and make an offering to what God is doing doing i would really appreciate it there are things that we need as we develop and we trust that you will be generous to us as the lord will lead you thank you so much for making it sheena power gang you don't know how big things are going to sheena power gang and power gang gonna lead god bless you god keep you